Hello fellow Leggers, you're joining us once again for a theatre trip. We are up in the Midlands where we are in Wolverhampton visiting the Grand. We're here quite a lot, you know. I don't we know if are. you've ever noticed. But we're here, there and everywhere. We are, but we've been invited. Hard to keep up sometimes. <laughs> we've been invited here tonight to see the National Theatre production of a show which is currently on a UK tour, but it's going to head into London's West End. Ooh, glittering West End. And that is A Taste of Honey. So as usual, fellow Leggers, stick around to hear all of our thoughts. Find out how many stars. Whether it's Break a leg or leg it. A taste of honey. Yep. I've heard of this. Yep. Um, I'm quite excited, especially to know that it's going to be heading into London as well. Yeah. Plus, it has. The can wonderful, I say, you can. The wonderful Jodie Pringer. And she is wonderful, guys. I don't think it was until Abigail's party that we yes. realised just the strength Boy, of her acting ability. Especially she's known for her singing, yeah. I guess, from Nancy, stereotypically. But she's a great actress. I know, she's Who such knew? a great actress. And I'm so glad she's getting these roles now. I am, absolutely. So let's talk about A Taste of Honey. Yes, it was, um, it's from 1958, it was the first play written by the playwright Sheila Delaney, who okay. was a working class playwright championed by the hero of the era and class war activist Joan Littlewood. Okay. She sent off spec the script to this to Joan Littlewood and just said, "Read it. I don't care if you. I don't care if you hate it because I love it and think it's got worth." And Joan Littlewood believed her. And at the age of just 19, she had her first ever play wow. premiere at the Theatre Royal Stratford East and later transferred to the Wyndham's Theatre in London's West End. Now, the play is set in Salford in the north of England in the 1950s. It's the story of Jo, a 17-year-old working-class girl, and her crude and sexually indiscriminate mother, Helen. We've okay. all got one of those, haven't we? <laughs> now, Joe begins with a, um, a romantic relationship with a young black sailor and falls pregnant with his child. And after a confrontation, Joe finds herself having to take up a lodger by the name of Jeff, who's a gay art student, as class, gender, race and sexual orientation are put into question in a mid-20th century Britain. I like the sound of it. Can you imagine it's writing about those nice things in 1958? Well, this is why it sounds Interracial good. Interracial relationships. Is it still relevant now? Sexual or is it going to be a bit dated, though? Well, I guess we're going to find out, aren't we? Okay. So the success of the play, which was considered groundbreaking at the time, and rightly so, led to a film adaptation in 1961, which won four BAFTAs. Seen it? No. Okay. I've never seen it or heard anything about <laughs> the play. Right. We did get to interview Jodie Pranger though. You did. With a uh, guest legger, Ian. You did. Check yes, that check out. That out there. Um, who spoke a little bit more about it. And I, I was just thinking, this is. I'm looking forward to this. Like, it's one of the things on my top top of the year looking forward to. Add it to the bucket list. Add it to the of bucket this list. Year. Now, this production from the National Theatre premiered in 2014 and had Leslie Sharp in the lead role of Helen at that point. Okay. That role is now being played by the wonderful Jodie Pranger. And this production now has the addition of live music. Because, you know, singers so may as well put some live music in right have a few songs if you've got the talent there use them right absolutely now it's transferring to london's west end trafalgar studios one from the 5th of december it's two acts around two hours 15 minutes including interval okay so stick around till then to hear our 30 second interval breakdown thoughts yeah. and um stick around to the end to find out how many stars we've come to the interval which means it's time for the breaker leggers 30, 30 second interval, interval breakdown, breakdown. Carla, what do you think? I'm really enjoying it. I think the cast is so strong. They're working with a really good text and delivering it at such pace um, and energy. I'm loving the set and the constant music um, accompanying the whole thing. How about you? I think it's such a classic and there's a reason for that. It sort of breaks boundaries and the way it's been told by such a capable cast is amazing. Helen jumps off the stage. What a character and what a part. It's everything I hoped it would be and I'm really looking forward to finding out what happens. We've come to the end of A Taste of Honey. And I bet here. you're wondering how sweet we found it. Oh, there you See what go. I did there? Nice. See what um, I did? How did you find it, Legacy? Do you know what? I absolutely loved it. Now, I only have ever read, and other than the interview that we had with Jodie, and we got a bit of information from the National Theatre there. Mm -hmm. um, you could check that out if you haven't already. But, um, just from the synopsis alone, I had a feeling it was going to be a piece that I would absolutely love. It sort of covered a lot of the topics that I find so interesting, of such a gender, of powerful women, of, of sexual orientation, of working class communities in the 1950s. 
And the fact that those themes are still so relevant today goes to show the strength of the writing here. The fact yes. that it stood the test of time yep. and it's so clear. And the fact that this has come from the pen of a 19 year old girl is absolutely mind blowing. This is the first major revival that is going into London in 60 years, other than at the National, but into a West End house. Wow. And my God, is it overdue? Um, it's a really good piece, um, Leggers. It's the this whole thing is good the cast is great the production is great and the piece is great and yeah. i think you've got to have all those three elements because i think if the cast was great and the production was good but the text wasn't great then you'd have issues but all three elements in this are really really strong it's kind of real it focuses on um real strong female characters at its lead which i imagine when it was written yeah how long ago was it 1958 written? would have been you know I really mean, pioneering God. really revolutionary the things no. we're oh, saying really? in terms yeah. of the themes talking about race talking about females and the role in society and this kind of mother this love hate push and pull relationship how they show affection it is really captivating theatre. Yeah. The text is so clipped and the way it's performed is so clipped, so snappy and dynamic. And like you say, it's got to have the elements come together. You can have a great cast but a crap script. You can have a great script but a really poor production. But you've got the golden triangle here of all those three elements. The golden triangle. The golden triangle. Are we going to have look, look for this for have. all of our pieces now? Yeah. Does it have the production, golden triangle? Production, direction cast. and cast. Yeah, production, yeah. cast and piece. Yeah, okay. and piece. That's there the we one. go. That's the golden, the golden triangle. triangle. Cool. Okay. Thanks, guys. And I mean, it's taken a strong director to bring that all together. And Bian Sh um, Shibani, who we, you know what, there was nothing wrong with the production for Dance Nation. But that was a great example, same director, where the, well, the well, script did nothing for us. We obviously just didn't get the no, piece. There's been many a comment on but, that review that but, we just didn't get it. But he also directed um, Barbershop Chronicles, which, which was, was great. brilliant. Yes, so, that, that, that's a, and uh, there's a real understanding of the text and of the piece yeah. that is clear from the characters, which must come from the direction. Absolutely. So really good stuff Absolutely. There. And then let's talk about the strong female characters that you were talking about. There, yes, there's, let's. There'd be a, uh, let's talk about Jodie Pranger in the role of Helen. I don't think here. we can go on much further without no, it, really. No, we, we it is an iconic part. It's an iconic part. Jodie Pranger is playing actress. another iconic part, yeah. coming from Abigail's party yeah. and now into this. Is it Helen? Yep, is the Helen. part in this? And the reason they're banging down her door for these is because she's so bloody good at them. She's she compelling. Is. She's never too much. And I think it's a, there's a tendency you could slip into almost evil stereotype mother here, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And I think she you're never right. does. That's no, the great yeah, you're thing. right. She is because the characters are big and bold, and yeah. she is big and bold, but not in an over the top way. Not She's just all. driving through it each perfectly, time. Perfectly, perfectly pitched. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, Break a Leg is nomination 2019 for best actress in a play. There we go. Jodie Prenger for a taste of her. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, her performance is absolutely great. You know what? We've totally skipped over here. We've skipped over something like yeah. the songs. There's songs. Because. There's music. She sings. She sings. The and cast I mean, sing. You're not going to be disappointed. If you only know Jodie from musical theatre and you know she's got this wonderful talent and this great set of lungs, you, she gets to use them in this piece because there are some fantastic, iconic jazz type songs. There is a. They are subtly woven in. Yeah, like it's not a musical. It's By very much no a play means. with music. Yeah. Yet the songs they've chosen do speak of the characters, I found. They are come from the character's heart, what the yeah. character would be singing. Yeah. Telling the stories of the what the character was singing. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. If we're yeah. on cast then we also have to go to the daughter, yeah. Josephine, who was Just played Joe. by just Joe. Just Joe. I, don't I think, think it's Joseph. definitely Josephine. Is it Josephine? Yes, it's Josephine. Yeah, it's Gemma Dobson. <laughs> oh, it is Josephine. We um, saw Gemma in Rita Sue and Bob 2 at the Royal Court Theatre, where she played a very similar character, this very northern, oh, okay. in a different era, that's set in the 1980s, but this desperate woman who is craving love, is a young person lost in the world. There are strong men around her, and she's trying to sort of rise up against them and understand them, and they're playing her, and she's playing them. She, but she's great at that as well. She's great, and in this, she doesn't leave the stage, I don't think. I think she's on stage the most time, and I was captivated by her. The whole journey she has as well, boy, does she have a journey. Because she's very naive and childlike at the beginning. With the, yep. There's a scene with a swing where you get this impression that she's a schoolgirl. She's got very, she's naive, but she's also hopeful, and that just strips away by the end. And plus she has she a really good intimate... She becomes jaded and worldly wise. Yeah, she almost has a really good intimate love scene as well, where she's... And I 
believed it. I believed the chemistry of the two characters. I think she has so much to go on. Break a leg a nomination. Another one. Another one. For Gemma Dobson in the yes. role of Josephine in A Taste of Honey for Best Actress, Best Actress in the Play. There you go. Wow. I thought she was absolutely great. Marvellous. Let's move on to some of the men, because there are some men in even though it has these strong <laughs> women at their heart. Let's talk about Jerome, Jerome Stokes in the role of Jimmy, the young black sailor that, yep. um, I don't want to give too much of the plot away if you don't already know, but a, a lover and lever is what I would say. And again, I bought into that dynamic between the two of them. I thought he did a great job. He gets a chance to sing as well. And his a lovely voice swing is so ballad. beautiful and soulful and light and oh, blah, blah, blah. Um, so Loved on that, that. Yeah. right, there we go. Who else? I'd also, I know you were we'll a big fan through. of Tom Vary as the role of Peter. Which one was he? Peter with the Patch. Oh, Peter with the Patch. There we go. <laughs> Peter with the Patch. I thought he was absolutely great, specifically his work in the second act, where he was playing this drunken, domineering, abusive um, husband. No, he wasn't a husband, was he? Partner. No, he was. Did they get husband. married? They did get married. Okay, yeah. they did get married. Please husband. Give it all Spoiler. Away. Spoiler. Um, but I thought he was absolutely great in those scenes. I was really quite on the edge, not quite knowing what he was going to. To do what you know, he was capable of yeah the threat there. you think is he gonna come to violence or just what is it ever, and i thought he played that really well and last but not least i'd like to mention stuart thompson in the role of jeff you'd like to mention i'd like to mention as well because he was brilliant. i'd go so far to say as he almost stole the show for me guys completely unexpectedly this is his professional stage debut and every single thing about him every little nuance every little maneuver every subtlety every extravagance was all perfectly pitched this is a guy who i think has got a really bright future this is a future potential olivier award winner he, the, the 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 capacity of his talent knows no bounds for me couldn't take my eyes off him I thought he was technically fantastic because there's musical interludes where his character also gets to sing a song between these bits and it was very big and very extravagant almost like quite drag-esque mm. I thought but then when he was in his scenes it came right down and was perfectly pitched and beautifully subtle and um, kind of naive uh, and sensitive I thought he played those levels between the two perfectly because he could have gone overboard yeah I, I, I in would, the scenes I would go so far to say as the technical ability of that performance for me was as good as Andrew Garfield playing Pryor Walter in Angels in America I thought it was that level of cap just capable completely captivating acting well there you Break go Breaker Legger's nomination Breaker Legger's nomination Best supporting I knew was actor coming. in a play for, the, for Stuart Thompson um, fresh out of Lambda in the role of Jeffrey in A Taste of he was great. Some He's really so good stuff. Good. And it's so tragic. The piece is so tragic. Yeah. You're the, serving a at tragedy. At the heart of it, it's a piece about loss. It's a piece about fear. It's a piece about... It's, it's a piece of, about love. It's, it's hard. It's a hard life, isn't it? It's almost, it's almost a bit like EastEnders. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all about family. And you're protecting family. your family, but you don't know how to well, show love like Coronation Street, for your family. It's north, right? Well, it's Coronation Street meet EastEnders. It's, it's that mesh like, of love. Okay. Do you know how they're very protective? Helen, ultimately, is very protective, but just doesn't know how to show it. Don't she doesn't want to anybody to it. mess around with her daughter, but at the same time, she doesn't know how to care for and show the love of her daughter. That's just how she's learned. And yep. her daughter, Josephine, is learning the same. It's, it's just a really good, clever commentary from the writer. Quick shout out for a fantastic set and costume to Hildegard Beckler, who did Anthony Cleopatra at the National, um, has an Olivier Award for After the Dance. Uh, fantastically, so evocative as a set. Like, I completely yep. believed it. Um, and also, really nice music work. They had a bass, a percussion, yep. and keys on stage, we giving won't. subtle musical undertones and playing those ja jazz numbers. We won't mention that really the added whole to it. cast, but Benjamin um, Boise Burrell brought the music together. Composer, orchestrator, arranger, music director. So the whole... Thing. And the three of them are on stage, the musicians, the whole time. Yeah. And so it just lifts apart. the whole piece because it wasn't originally staged with the band. Um, oh. This production, they weren't there at, at the, the national. They weren't there at the national. Well, no. this is a fantastic addition. Yeah. This it's has worth been seeing it again. Into this production now on How? tour. What? And heading back into the. Went to London. Well, it's almost End. worth if you've seen it at the National. Yeah. I'd almost say it's worth seeing it again. Come again. To see it in this way as well. Did they add the songs just because they got Jodie and they knew she could sing? I mean, it's a great place to start, isn't it? Why not, eh? Okay. Let's wrap it up. So Let's wrap it up. For the UK tour, before it goes into London Trafalgar Studios 1, we are going to give Taste of Honey...
five. Five stars for this piece. I don't think you'll regret this, guys. It's a classic in a fantastic production. Um, if it's something that's even picture interesting, you've read a blurb of it. It's got interesting themes that are so well, that so well conveyed and so well portrayed by these fantastic actors. In this. I don't know what more we can say. It's, it's got the golden triangle that we've talked about. Hashtag it's got golden triangle. Three leg nominations. <laughs> yeah. So this is definitely one to catch. I, I do was we have a better revival nomination category? We do now. Why? What are you best thinking? Best revival, a taste of honey, break a leg as an award, 2019. Boom. Four, four break a leg as an award nominations. But you know what? It's just, just what I think. It's what I think. What do you guys think? Have you seen this play? Planning on catching it in town? Let us know down below. We'd love to hear from you. We are the break a leggers. We'll catch you again soon. Bye. Bye.